we just got done cutting all these two by fours to length. And then we also put all the pocket holes that are going to join all these boards together. To drill all the pocket holes, traditionally I would use my old pocket hole jig, um, which is the K4 system where you would have to stand this board on end, maybe clear the ceiling, and but we did something different this time. Craig just came out with this new 520 Pro. Rather than doing that traditional on end, I was able to slide this on, clamp it down, and drill our holes. The way I like to think about it is this is taking the jig to the board rather than taking the board to the jig. The next step is to join all these pieces together. We're gonna to be using two and a half inch uh, Craig jig screws. Now, where we're at is there's going to be some pieces that go across here, just like everything else. But we've got to put our plywood decking in first. So here in the corners, we're going to add some triangle bracing. Uh, and the main reason for that is that is where the CNC feet are. So the weight will be here in the corner. And I want to build this thing as rigid as possible because I don't, I don't want it to move. There's a lot of uh, forces with the CNC when it's operating and the last thing you want is your CNC enclosure to wobble at all because that decreases your tool accuracy. So now it's time to think about how we're going to attach this plywood to the bracing. Now we didn't give much thought to this beforehand because we weren't sure where the bracing exactly was going to land. We knew how we were going to brace it, but now that we can see it, um, it would look a lot cleaner to attach the plywood using pocket holes through th this bracing and screwing up into this plywood up above. We'll have to do this from the other side because of the angle. I'll take you up top and show you how we're going to do it. So this clamp or this jig is going to, because of the angle that we have to drill these holes, we have to flip it like this, flips on, tighten it. It's all, I've already got it set up to an inch and a half because that's our material thickness. So we've got the plywood in. It's really sturdy. This thing is, is coming along really good. Now it's time to put the back and uh, kind of let's call it the concrete side uh, because these two sides are gonna be different than the other two. I'll explain that here in a second. To, for the back and the concrete side, we're gonna use this quarter, or, uh, yeah, quarter inch material. We are going to be attaching it with these 5 8 inch brad nails which I love these little things, and uh, using our brad nailer obviously to do that. So there'll be a bunch of them back here. Again, it'd be really easy to pop off if we ever want to change it out or add anything to it. Nice. Ready? One, two, three.
we have the majority of the construction done, it's time to work on electric and dust collection. Now these kind of have to be plumbed in, um, so to speak. And so what we've done is we went ahead, before we put this, this pan, outside panel on, just for accessibility, we added two power strips, um, one for each machine. So each machine is independently um, ran to power, and then it's all plugged in back here at the outlet. So what we can do is we can turn each one on individually. So that's gonna be really nice. We got everything buttoned up really nice. And the other thing is, is dust collection. All right, so our dust collection comes in on the back corner and on each, on each level here. And what's gonna happen is, is all of our main piping, our four inch piping, we're using what was here before. And we've got it running to the back of the entire um, carcass of this thing. So the, the pipes come in and then we're gonna use this flexible hose to go over and then this is gonna be ran to each boot. So just like electrical, everything is ran independently. So these uh, levels can be run together or separately. So if you remember a few months back, I built this wood wall as a backdrop for filming purposes. So I built that entire wall not knowing I was gonna build a double-decker CNC enclosure. So a way that we figured out to repurpose this wall behind here is we took all of the boards off the wall behind the CNC enclosure and we're gonna repurpose them and put them on this side of the enclosure. And what that's gonna do is we're gonna film, it'll give us a corner that we can film in, still utilizing this wood, still giving the, the wood wall vibe, and still having the CNC enclosure. So now it's time to figure out the doors for the enclosure. I went back and forth on a couple different ideas. One idea was to do kind of like an oven um, where the doors folded towards you and down and just kind of hung down. I like that mainly because of the amount of space that it takes and they kind of hang down out of the way rather than opening up and you know uh, hanging off the edges, I guess. There's just pros and cons of both of them. But what I decided to do was to do traditional doors that will open up um, from the center out. And the reason I chose to do that was the materials that I'm going to use. Now, building one door, one big door like an oven with these one by threes and the acrylic that I'm going to use. So acrylic is kind of expensive. So I wanted to use thin acrylic, one eighth inch, so I can see in but it doesn't really have much rigidity over a five foot gap. It kind of flops. And these one by threes, although it hold the edge, just it's not gonna be rigid enough uh, to, to serve as a door. So what I decided to do is make traditional doors that will open from the middle. That way I can build four frames and use smaller pieces of acrylic and that way they'll be a lot more rigid.
This was a massive upgrade to my CNC operation. Not only did I add another CNC, but I also gained more dust control. I gained, it's quieter in the shop. And ultimately that's why I decided to go with a enclosure. Be on the lookout for more videos about this enclosure. I might do some modifications for some more sound dampening. One of my next videos is going to be about a controller station. And that's already in the works. The goal is to have dedicated laptops to control each one of these so I can run them both at the same time. Not only did I gain those advantages, but my filming area got a major upgrade by repurposing that wall. So I've already got some stools and I'm gonna kind of make a little bit of a set in that corner. And this is kind of a cool area because it doubles as a CNC area and a filming location. Obviously I can't have both of them at the same time, but uh, it's a great use of space. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out all the other CNC related videos I have for you right here. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time I'm building something.